Some music for your Sunday now. And over the course of 27 years, Tracy Chapman has moved us time and time again. Her songs are instantly recognisable and strike a chord in every heart. Well, with just three or four chords, <laughs> generally. Uh, seven US Bureau Chief Mike Amor went along to meet her on the eve of the release of her greatest hits album. Change. She's got a voice that can stop you in your tracks. How bad, how good does it need to get? And back in 1988, when a young Tracy Chapman released her self-titled album, the world couldn't help but stop and listen. The first album was just so different to what was around then. I don't think anyone expected a record from a solo singer-songwriter to um, be received in the way that my, my first record was. I, I didn't expect it, of course. I had no idea what was coming. Immediately, this young, accidental activist gained critical acclaim. Don't you know, are talking about a revolution, it sounds. Her song of revolution, embodying the spirit of a movement thousands of miles and many continents away, sounds like a whisper. leading her to perform at one very special revolutionary's tribute concert. I just want to take you back to one special moment um, in your career as performing at Nelson Mandela's uh, 70th, 70th birthday. What was that like? It, it was amazing um, and terrifying, <laughs> truthfully. I, I wish I could say how I managed to get there. I almost feel like, you know, we snuck in through the back door or something. <laughs> because, you know, no one knew of me at that point. Uh, I think my record had just come out. And then there I was, out there, saying you talk about a rev revolution. At a time when music could galvanize a nation, her powerful lyrics and soulful tunes struck a chord. She went on to win three Grammy Awards the following year. Suddenly, everyone was singing her song. What was it like to be caught up in that at the time? It was exciting, of course, um, and scary. I, I, I had all these moments, these first moments um, of, uh, you know, playing for bigger audiences. I'd started out playing in coffee houses and street performing and, uh, you know, playing for two or three hundred people at the most. And, and then it all changed, you know, and seemingly overnight. And for a shy young woman from Cleveland, Ohio, the sudden fame was overwhelming. How did you handle it? It's just such a radical change in, in your life and mostly just in the way that people perceive you and the, you know, that you get recognized and, um, and people pay attention to what you do. And I, I take it you're not someone who you know, particularly enjoys being out in the public eye apart from your music. Yeah, I'm not much uh, drawn to the limelight. We don't see you in the tabloids, for example. I hope not. <laughs> That's a doppelganger if you do see one. Last night I heard the screaming. Tracy sang of revolution and domestic violence. Across the lines. Who would dare to go? Racial tension. This love is hate. And injustice. You get a fast car. I want a ticket to anywhere. But it was Fast Car, a haunting anthem brimming with the promise of a better life, that became her signature song. I think the, the term classic is used too much in music, but certainly uh, Fast Car is an absolute classic. Did you know it was going to be that good? I knew that it was a special song for me when I wrote it. You get a fast car. I got a plan to get us out of here, been working at the convenience store. While she says the song is a work of fiction, the themes were intensely personal. I grew up in a working class family. Um, I, you know, we had good and bad days. My old man's got a problem. Yeah, but the bottle, that's the way it is. I think everyone can relate to the idea of wanting to um, search for a better life. And, and that was certainly um, part of my personal story. Uh, growing up in Cleveland, it was uh, very difficult in the 70s. It was a volatile place, uh, a lot of racial tension. Uh, it was economically depressed. Unemployment was high. Um, I, I wanted to try to find something better. Both poignant and political, Fast Car carried a message that was relevant to the times and 30 years later, it still is. I think that generally everyone thinks that the 
generation that follows will do better. We'll have more opportunities. Um, um, and now it seems it's just the opposite, that uh, you need a college degree in order to get the most basic job that you know will never pay you enough to support yourself and support a family. Um, so obviously, change needs to happen. Social change has been a reoccurring theme for this passionate artist, but activism, she says, hasn't been her motivation. I, I don't do it because I um, see myself as a protest singer or anything like that. I, I do it because these are the things that matter to me. I just feel that we all have a role to play in um, trying to make the world better. And I have a chance to do that through my music. But despite the huge departure from songs like her own, she has a healthy respect for the female artists dominating the charts today. But what do you think of the current crop? You know, the uh, Rihanna's, uh, Taylor Swift, Katy Perry. It's, it's good pop music. People have always made that kind of music, you know, that appeals to a wide audience. Um, I actually, to me, it seems like they may be women who are even a little bit more in control of their own images and um, and the, the way that their careers um, are directed. So it's good to see that. Now firmly in control of her own musical destiny, she's finally decided to release a greatest hits album. This record had been in discussion for years. Just kept feeling like I wasn't quite ready. Um, I, I wasn't feeling like I was in a retrospective state of mind. But now, with plenty to reflect on, Tracy Chapman's new album is an anthology of the songs that have made her music timeless. Leave tonight or live and die this way.